Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee on this Saturday morning, and I thought I'd cut a quick video this morning regarding uh, what the models did last night, uh, because by now, um, word on the internet it will be uh, spread by, uh, um, like wildfire about the, the European uh, developing a storm in the east, and I just want to clarify from a meteorological standpoint so they have an understanding of what the models are doing, and why it may or may not be real. So let's just backtrack, first of all, because uh, we are, of course, uh, very cold this weekend. And that pulls out you back to this trough in the east, and I'm sorry, ridge in the east and trough in the west. Uh, you have a block that's beginning to build up in Greenland later next week. And here's where now we're going to see um, what the European does. And then I'm going to show you the GFS. And by the way, um, I will cut a regular video. I'm doing this now because uh, I, I, I just want to kind of get it ahead of the curve here so you guys can gain, you know, have an understanding already of what, what is real and what's not. So here's the European. This is for next Wednesday night. So it has you know, this upper air vortex complex that it has in uh, central Canada. Here's your block, okay? Ridge now in the west, low in the Gulf of Alaska. Okay, so you, you actually do have players here uh, in position uh, for something um, dynamic. And what the European does is that it takes the block and really strengthens it. So now we're at day seven here. We've got this very strong upper high. So the vortexes are all displaced south. You have a trough that sticks out at 50 and 50. You've got a low sitting uh, in uh, Hudson's Bay, Hudson Bay, and um, a trough troughing generally east and a ridge in the west. So this is a complete opposite look of what models have, what we've seen for a good chunk of this winter, except for brief periods. And here we are uh, at uh, next Saturday and next Sunday. And here is what the European does. If we go back, uh, here, I'm sorry, here we've got a deep trough now that dives down, cuts off uh, in along the coast. Uh, you've got a low out somewhere near 50 and 50. You've got this blocking high up in Canada that has means cold air all over the place. And the European says it a snowstorm. That's what it has. But um, I want to show you um, what the GFS is doing because this is going to be uh, this is something when I saw it this morning is about as opposite as I have ever seen two models that was the European this is the GFS so let me show you that again here's the European okay storm in the east no question on, of that with this kind of look if it's right here's the GFS deep trough in the west huge ridge in the east I mean, it, it, it could not, uh, you know, I was talking about this with a, a friend of mine this morning, a, a meteorologist, and he said to me, well, at least the models are the same out in the Aleutians. And then they, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the, the, this is, I have, you know, been watching, it, it's very rare that you see a difference this radical because the Europe, the GFS has a totally different view of how this plays out. And, and the GFS's view it was would be consistent with what we've seen all winter uh, for the most part, which is this signature trough in the west and ridge in the east. And I will say that up until now, and we've had these periods over the winter time with these weather models where um, they both either both the European and the GFS has done this, probably the GFS a little bit more, where they have signaled a change from this trough in the west, ridge in the east pattern to something colder and it wound up being wrong um the european i can think of that one instance i believe it was going into january or perhaps later in january signaling you know kept run after run uh, on the gfs was trough in the east trough in the east trough in the east and and the european all of a sudden went to the trough in the west uh inside the day six period and then all of us you know and that's what wound up happening so uh, i would just say at this point before people start getting really worked up over this it's it's next week a b we kind of re need to resolve you know the idea of the model is being both at opposite ends in terms of what the pattern is so uh, you know uh, i just want to sort of leave you with that with this very short 
a view of um, what's happening. And just real quick, I'll show you what the surface looks like um, of, of, these of these models. Um, so let's go to the U.S. and we will go to, so here's the GFS. You're not going to, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have the European, the, the, a European that looks like these surface maps, which we don't have that a, a ability. But basically, you know, the GFS would take a low to the Western Great Lakes and on up into Eastern Canada, and then another one that follows right behind it, okay? And why wouldn't it with the deep trough in the West and the ridge in the East? The European, on the other hand, and we can only see this in 24-hour uh, increments, and you're just going to have to take my word for it, what, what it showed, because I did look at the European snow maps. But here's the Europeans' view. Because it's got a signature block, low pressure uh, moves across northeastern Arkansas uh, through the Tennessee Valley, redevelops right along the Virginia coast, and, and intensifies very rapidly and moves up into the Gulf of Maine. I mean, this would be a snowstorm from Virginia to New England if this were correct. Um, and the model produces two to three feet. Um, the GFS, on the other hand, for the same time frame, has this. Okay, a low uh, sitting out in north northeastern Oklahoma, getting ready to move up toward the Great Lakes with southwest winds here in the east, and that would mean temperatures in the 60s with thunderstorms and the severe weather. So, which is what we, the pattern we've been in all along. So that's I'm going to leave you with this. And later today, when the day runs are all done, we'll take a look at everything and see how it plays. But I just wanted at least you to have a flavor for what is going on. Um, and I'm coming to absolutely no conclusion about um, what I think is going to happen. I mean, if I had to bet, uh, I would I would probably bet against the European uh, because of the fact that the trough in the West has been so persistent. So until I see evidence that um, the European is in the right going in the right direction. And uh, I do have a little bit of evidence that the European ha is, is going in the right direction because the Canadian model s supports more the European's view than the GFS's view. But let's wait till later today. We'll be talking about this for a while. But I just wanted to put that out there because, you know, all kinds of stuff is going to start flying around. And I wanted to be a little bit of a voice of reason in terms of what is happening and, and, and with the upper air pattern and explaining why the model is doing what it's doing. All right, so have a great day. If you liked my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free, and you get videos at least once a day, and you get notified when those videos are posted. And uh, thank you to all my regular uh, YouTube subscribers and to all of you that have just arrived to my YouTube channel. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we do weather at least once a day, and we do weather across the country. So um, I, I hope you, you, you stay with me. And again, if you're new and you like me, hit my subscribe button. Thank you.